name is Shell, and welcome back to my channel. I am so glad you are joining me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. But you know what this video is about? This video is about how to get straight A's at Harvard, okay? So basically, I just got my grades for this semester, and I got straight A's, and I've gotten straight A's before, and I've also not gotten straight A's. And so basically, I've been pinpointing exactly what the difference has been in my study habits between semesters. And after four years of college, I thought this was the perfect time to finally, you know, relinquish all of my knowledge to the public. So here we are. I'm gonna get right into it about how to get straight A's in general. You know, what are those study habits that at least I adopted that led to my success in school and hopefully everybody's success who ends up watching this video. Number one, I would say is to create a list of assignments. And so I'm actually probably gonna put somewhere on the screen exactly what mine looks like, but literally what I made is in Google Sheets, I literally made a list of assignments for every single course I was taking all in one so basically it was ordered from dates and so obviously the things that are due like tomorrow are before the things that are at the end of semester but when i mean assignments it included homeworks it included readings it included midterms it included finals so it was an easy checkpoint for me to just like look at and say okay this assignment is due tuesday for this class this assignment is due next thursday so then it's an easy way for me to order what to do when and also it was a good way for me to want keep track of what I've done it makes you feel good when you put a check mark by assignment that's completed or delete an assignment that was completed and so you might notice I got a little lazy towards the end of the semester and so I forgot to put check mark so another tip I have for success is make a study group okay and so when I mean a study group you can take that as loose or as tight of a term as you want I mean you could have one person in your study group really just like a study buddy or you could have a study group up to like six people personally anytime I've been added to a group chat with more than like five ish people who are pretty close friends nothing really gets done just because if you're not that close with everybody in the study group people aren't as open to kind of like collaborate and just you know um, go over things then if you're in a smaller group I always feel like the more intimate settings are when things actually get done so in the day when you're doing work or projects and stuff like that in reality, it's never more than two or three of you guys. So I feel like you should take that into consideration when you make your study groups and your group chats. Just because the more people it is, I feel like the less likely it is that, you know, people are really going to help. It's almost like the bystander effect. Like, it's 10 people in the chat. So, you know, every person is like, well, someone else is probably going to answer their question. And then next thing you know, it's been a month and the question has not been answered. And there's more. This semester specifically, I mainly had like one study buddy and then I was a part of study groups with my I mainly leaned on my study buddy we would you know go through every single assignment together and figure all of that out and so I really used my study groups as almost like a confirmation that me and my study buddy you know were in the right mindset when we were completing the homework don't forget that you know like School is a marathon, not a sprint. And so you wanna make sure also you make these connections with people because ultimately if you're in the same classes, next thing you know, you'll be in the same field after you graduate. So making these connections are crucial beyond just the classroom setting and beyond just that one month that you know, you're working on an assignment. Another thing, this kind of goes off of the whole make a some type of calendar or I say use a Google Sheets um but work ahead you guys keep track of your assignments that is key because if you're able to keep track of them the moment you knock them out you can start working ahead and next thing you know people are like stressed over a big project that's due in like two days but you started working on it a week ago so you already got your questions answered you know in office hours and everything so work ahead that will be the key because it also allows you to kind of coordinate when you want to do what or what you want to do when and so with that you can easily kind of like get everything done and stretch it out not only that you don't feel so stressed like you're not at that same office hours asking questions about a project because you asked him two weeks ago when there was no one at the office hours so you know working ahead just in general will help you and i know it's not always realistic y'all we got assignments to do and we got a lot of them to do but just like keeping that in mind and keeping track of your assignments because even if you don't get started on an assignment ahead you can always just read the instructions 
get your questions answered so then when you do start the assignment you know you don't have any questions and you're just ready to go you know a lot of these points kind of like build off of each other but basically continuing on go to office hours y'all so i know every school has a little different but at harvard office hours are basically like a like a homework session i know some people's office hours at other schools are like literally like you're just talking to the teacher ours are more like you're getting the homework done so whatever it is that your school calls it or whatever it is y'all go to office hours because you have nothing to lose you only have stuff to gain like i will literally go to office hours i haven't even read the homework but you know what other people have read the homework so then when they ask questions i can listen to those questions i can hear what the you know different teachers have in response and then even if i have no idea what they're talking about i make notes of exactly what is said and you know what the thought process should be so then once i do start the homework i don't have those questions or even if i do I already have the answers or like you know what track I should be on when completing it so that's why I say go to office hours because at the end of the day you have nothing to lose there's only to gain if someone else in the class has that question more than likely you may also have that question and so just making a simple note of what the teacher's response is can go a long way and so also a shameless plug just by attending office hours you can start making connections with the teachers and the students but i kind of touched on the students already so just going on to the teachers if any of you are planning on going to grad school that's a recommendation letter because right there that shows commitment that you are going to these office hours and you know what even if it's a topic you're struggling in that just shows determination you know and that shows oh you know a lot of things that a teacher can put in a recommendation letter and get you into that grad school get you into that med school that business school that education school whatever it is that you want to get in okay so the next thing is figuring out some type of repetitive study habit that you can do whether it's making making flashcards and so personally I would use Quizlet um, unless it's something that like I just have no idea so for example when I did organic chemistry I made flashcards with all of the amino acids and stuff like that because that's extensive so I needed you know I, I couldn't just go on Quizlet for that I needed to be piling through them flashcards every hour of my life jokes but y'all know what I mean yeah just figure out what your method is so like I was saying flashcards making mnemonics just making your own personalized study guides i would make study guides on um on my ipad and so you know some people use notability some people use good notes whatever it is that works for you figure it out and you know also remember writing even though i say quizlet sometimes it is good to just write your own flashcards or write your own study guides just because writing in itself is a form of like memorization i don't know if you guys have ever heard but even some teachers they would allow us like cheat sheets that are one page and so a lot of times in the test you don't even use the cheat sheet because the process of making the cheat sheet was studying in itself actually making these study methods will just honestly help you but even if you need something beyond that just creating them and you know having a form that every night you go through your study guide or every night you go through your flashcards uh will definitely help you and just allow these things to stick in your brain especially if you're some type of stem major or something like that these type of things will be key 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 and then in some classes i would say just like google some questions but you'll find that quizlets have already been made for a lot of the courses or a lot of the materials that you go through because at the end of the day science does not change math does not change you know and so different stuff like that economics does not change and just like taking note of that and just um kind of like going through quizlet and seeing that you'll see that a lot of this material already has study guides for it even me i um took latin in college and so <laughs> in actuality my teacher made quizlets for our test so you know you never know you may have a cool teacher like i did that literally made the quizlet herself or other students so just like pull from those resources because always remember you're not alone and you're not the first person to go through whatever you're going through especially in college so just keep that in mind when it comes to studying and finding different resources another thing that i want to say um or two more things i want to say these are my biggest tips that if you want to take anything away take this sleep go to sleep go to sleep go to sleep go to sleep i don't know if you're anything like me but i gotta sleep 
and after like 11 midnight in actuality whatever i read is not being processed or put into long-term memory okay i could probably barely recall it five minutes after reading it and so that's why i say go to sleep because it's doing more harm than help for you to stay awake trying to study this stuff and not retaining any of the information and so obviously everybody's different i know some of my friends that just like cram but personally for me sleep was key because it did better for me to go to sleep and then wake up in the morning and work on things than to stay up late and then just like be stressed and then kind of building off of that topic give yourself a break you cannot do work seven days a week for six months a year you have to give yourself a break so just to give an example this semester fridays if it had to do with academics, it had, if it had to do with me writing a paper, me finishing a homework assignment, no. On Fridays, I did not do anything related to school. Friday was my break day. And so, you know, everybody has different course loads. Maybe you can't dedicate a whole day to non-academics, but half a day. Dedicate something to not doing school because college is hard. College is a lot of work and you cannot your brain simply needs a break. You can't do things every day. That's why nowadays schools are adopting mental health days, wellness days, different things like that. Because we're, you know, finally schools are taking into consideration what allows students their greatest success. And taking a break allows it. So take a break, y'all. Dedicate a day to not doing anything related to school. Enjoy yourself. Paint your nails, go to the museum, go swimming, do whatever you want, hang out with friends, watch TV. Cause I'm telling you on those days, majority of the time I laid in the bed and watched TV. And you know what? The thing is right after that day, so Saturday for me, I would wake up just naturally cause I had such a relaxing day. I wake up at like 8 a.m. and just do work from eight to like, in actuality, eight to noon. And you get a lot of stuff done, especially when you're just refreshed, well slept, the whole thing so i would say don't forget to take a break dedicate some time to yourself dedicate time to not doing academics because at the end of the day you're still a student you're a person and you're not just a workhorse you're not a work hound. and so remember that we have to dedicate time to ourselves okay and on that note I'm glad you dedicated time to watching this video and I hope that this video is going to make a difference in your study habits from this point forward and I am so excited for you anybody you know going to college in college like congrats all in itself you know for making to this point and so don't forget to like subscribe comment any other videos you want to see and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day and I wish you all the best success I always feel like I should wear glasses in my videos because you just naturally